And you know the funny thing with this chipping is you know I don't I don't really have a plan when I'm doing it, I just kinda let the brush do its own thing. I want to do some brush chipping on video, but all I managed to do is video my hand. So I'm going to put up a few images here of the brush chipping I did on the elephant. Sponge chipping certainly has its place. It's not nearly so precise as brush chipping. But I use them I use both. I use both methods and often use them together like I did with the elephant here. I'm going to clear the model with MIG Satin Lucky Varnish. And this is used straight from the bottle. It's pretty thin. I have the air pressure of my compressor set to about 12 psi. Here we go. I try to get a wet coat, but at the same time, I don't want any runs. So there's a little bit of a balancing act with, with this clear because it is very thin. I'm getting ready to start doing a little bit of weathering in the undercarriage. I'm going to start with applying some of this MIG heavy earth. After that, I'm going to apply this MIG dry earth. All right. I have to be a little bit careful back by that rear sprocket because I can't take that off, so. And I'm not going to put this on real heavy. All right, so I got an old paintbrush here. I'm going to use that to brush this heavy earth. All right, I've taken the brush, a little bit of thinner. I know the glare is terrible. And I've streaked the heavy mud, or the heavy earth, underneath the undercarriage. All right, now I'm going to add some dry earth. All right, so I'm going to work with that. I think I have the undercarriage weathering about where I want it for the sides. Here's the right side, and of course, you get the road wheels in there to look a little bit different. And here's the left side. Next thing I'm going to do with the model is I'm going to apply filters to you know, little specific areas. I'm not going to cover the entire model, but panels or hatches. And one of the filters is tan for three-tone camo. Well, I don't have three-tone camo, but I do have a Dunkel Gel base, so I use a little bit of this 
and the second is green for gray green and I don't have a gray green model but I do have a lot of green camouflage on the model so I may use this in some areas where I have a lot of green camouflage. I've applied the filters <clears throat> and I didn't do a lot of it but I, I put the brown filter on this piece right here this here All right, so put some oil paint here in my well on my palette. Apply just a bit of thinner, I don't need much. I'll add more thinner once I start to spread it out. And I'm going to streak this. And I want to get it vertical. You can see that these aren't vertical streaks. Let me get it spread out a little bit here. So I'll give that a second. Give the thinner a chance to evaporate so we can see what I have. All right, well, I'm pretty good with that. So I'm going to move around the model and continue to do light dust streaking on the rest of the surfaces. I have the streaking and a general wash using the MIG oil brushers dust oil paint. So at this time, I believe, I'm ready to move on to the next step, and that would be the pin wash. I'm ready to start the pin wash. I'm going to use MIG oil brushers, Starship Filth, and then I'll mix it with some odorless turpenoid and apply it with a two slash zero brush. All right, I'll try that. Let's see how that looks. A little bit of paint in my brush. All right, you can see how the pin wash has really brought out the details in this area here. And I'm gonna work on this hatch over here. So now, I need to get in there and clean some of this up. Right, right here. Gotta get rid of that. Where I don't want it. Alright, I have the top of the casemate done. And the pin wash, one of my favorite steps. It just adds so much to the model. I'm getting ready to do some spattering in this area here and here. I'm going to use some big splashes, dry earth, an old brush, and a toothpick.
if I have some where I don't want it, I'll use some thinner and remove it. I have the mud spatter done on the model. And the pin wash is finished. We have the road wheels done. The model's done. I have the spare tracks painted. All right, well next, I take this polished metal pigment, I'm going to use this rubber brush, and actually I could probably just use the lid here. I can apply pigment over the top of this silver paint. to get a nice polished steel look. Where these road wheels would be running running over the tracks. Those are pretty darn nice. I think the model is in pretty good shape. I give everything a good looking over. Still have to paint the antenna and have to put the hatch on here. But I won't put those pieces on until. I have the tracks on. But overall, the model is looking pretty good. I have the weathering about how I like it. I like the paint to be faded out just a little bit. Well, I have the paint on the tracks, so i am reached the point where I have to start weathering the tracks. And I'm going to use 
big oil brushers to dust the tracks up. I'm going to mix up a real thin wash with this dust oil paint. thin. So I just want a real light dusting of this oil paint on top of this track rust. So I want as much of the rust to come through as I can, but at the same time, you know, I need to need to make the tracks look dusty. So I'm going to I'm going to brush down in between these cleats. I've given the elephant tracks a coating of very thin MIG Oil Brushers dust oil paint. So I think what that's doing for me is giving me some dusty tracks while allowing some of the rust effects to come through. I mean, obviously, they're a rusty red, but you can see here some of the, the different tones shining through. And I did put a little bit of dried dirt down inside some of the links. After painting the aluminum, in the tracks where the road wheels will run I used polished metal pigment and put that over the top of the aluminum and it gives a pretty nice polished metal sheen and I did the same for the other side with the track cleats before I can install the tracks, I need to determine where I want to put the model on the display base. So I'm taking the DS tracks from the kit, laying those out, and marking out my base where I want the track marks to be. Well, the tracks are now on the model. Well, the elephant is finished. I still need to build the display base, but the kit is built.
Well, this is the end of the construction of the model. I will do a little bit of work on the tracks, dust them up a little bit when I put the model on the display base, and there may be a few other small touch-ups that I do. But for the most part, the model's finished. I want to apologize for the fan noise in the background, but it's just been really hot here in Arizona. So thanks for watching, and I hope you come back for part six. I get the model mounted on a display base and get ready to put it in my display cabinet. Thanks again for watching.